Social policy is a division of the social sciences. It looks at how societies identify, conceptualise and respond to need and promote, or not, the welfare and well-being of their members. The study of social policy encourages and enables students to think critically about concepts like need, risk, citizenship, inequality, globalisation and community. At the heart of social policy is critical thinking. It's critical thinking about the way in which politics uh, goes about engaging with meeting the needs of society. It's thinking about the outcomes of policy and whether or not they have the consequences that policy intended. It's about interrogating qualitative and quantitative data, statistics and people's experiences to try and understand how policy has, a, has its effects. We're very interested in what governments do. We're very interested uh, in institutions like the family, the extended family. Uh, and we're very interested in uh, things like neighbourhood and community and the, and the way that those things come together uh, to address people's needs. As well as looking at social policy in individual societies, we're interested in the overarching global structures of social policy and how these impact on how different societies can respond. It's a very good course in that it's interdisciplinary and it also gives students a variety of methodological skills but also skills in terms of understanding the world. Um, it, so it gives them a sort of philosophical understanding of the way in which society works. Comparative social policy looks at uh, some of the questions, some of the taken for granted assumptions around social policy. And some of those assumptions uh, are based on the idea that social welfare, social policy is a force for good and also that the state is a key provider or the main provider in um, the provision of social welfare. We also look at the role of global institutions like the United Nations or the World Health Organization, the World Bank, and more regional ones like the European Union and the impact these have on how societies can organise welfare. We draw on theories of decision making to explore the role of evidence in policy making. So for example, do politicians and practitioners use um, evidence to make rational, objective decisions about policy? Or are they more concerned with electoral cycles, public opinion and media attention? I'm very interested uh, in cities and urban issues generally. One of the things that's happened in many cities uh, and continues to happen uh, is the process of urban regeneration. Now in Bristol we uh, have regenerated the harbourside area. One of the issues around that is the impacts on local people. It's hugely different regenerating an area if you bring in uh, international companies, retailers, uh, coffee shops and there are advantages to that. It's, but it's a very, very different thing to thinking about how local people might be involved in that. You know, so might there be means for independent shops to be involved in retail? Uh, might there be uh, social housing provided as a condition of building you know, what might otherwise be luxury flats? Housing is a key preoccupation in social policy. How societies go about meeting the housing needs of their members is really important and it differs quite dramatically uh, between societies. In the UK, we've gone typically historically for providing public housing delivered through uh, local authorities, through council housing. Um, but that's changed over time. So whereas uh, social housing became very important at particular points in history, council housing, for example, reached 30% of uh, the housing stock in the UK around about 1980. But since then, it's progressively declined, uh, partly through the right to buy, uh, through sitting tenants, partly as a consequence of transferring housing out of the council sector into the housing association sector. The idea of prisons as holiday camps is very popular. It's one certainly promoted by the media, but also some politicians. When we look behind the headlines, we see a very different picture emerging about the realities of prisoners' lives. There's often a history of abuse, mental health problems, drug addiction problems, low levels of employment, and certainly unstable housing patterns. On the two courses I teach, Criminology and Punishments in Society, students are exposed to a number of different theoretical explanations, they're exposed to empirical research, and also, where possible, they're exposed to practical applications. So what that means, students are encouraged to visit 
at the local courts, like the magistrates here behind me. They make visits to Crown Courts, but also where it's possible, we try to access the local men's and women's prisons in Bristol. Now, the idea of social policy is not to say that one of these views or one of these approaches is right or wrong. What it will do uh, is enable you to answer those sorts of questions in an informed way. So questions like, do you trust politicians? Do you think that drugs should be legalised? Would you pay more taxes to increase welfare? Or do you think that citizens should be consulted in the design and delivery of public services? And they could be all sorts of social issues, you know, from uh, you know, big theoretical questions about, you know, why do we have the state, what does the state offer us, uh, to uh, very, very uh, specific questions about uh, how can we reduce domestic violence. One way to combat it is to end discrimination against women and actually to make sure that there is equality between women and men. Well, I think some of the work that we do in social policy in this department and elsewhere is to build. Well, first to understand what's going on because that's what we need to do to understand how policies are created, but a lot of our work is about impact. And thinking around possibilities and options and alternatives, which I think comparative social policy and social policy more generally really equips you with. The sorts of students that are attracted to social policy uh, are those that have got our interest in social issues uh, and particularly those that are interested in debating social issues. And that of course can have a payoff in many ways. It takes you into a range of different careers in the public sector, going into the civil service or working in local government, into the not-for-profit and voluntary sector, working in sort of civil society to try and address the needs of particular people. And it can also take you into uh, a private sector role where critical thinking and scrutiny and interrogation of evidence and data are really important. One of the great things about social policy is that it allows you to develop your social conscience. Um, compassion for other human beings is a trait that we all strive towards um, and studying some of the things that we do in social policy really brings that out. Um, it really helps you to understand what other people might be going through, uh, the situations that other people have to live in. Uh, it makes you much more socially aware. I think I study it because I want to be I, I want to help make the world that I live in and this certainly gives me the opportunity to be able to fulfil that. The greatest thing about it is you meet people on the same course who have done completely different topics, everybody, you, you really have a chance to make your own thing out of it. The best thing about social policy compared to other degrees is it's very interdisciplinary. It's absolutely amazing. I'd say do it if you're doing it at Bristol. Yeah, yeah. I definitely recommend it as so. well. It's the best in the country. Seven years it, in a row. Yeah, it is, it is yeah. the best for social policy, actually. There's a bit for everyone, and there's a quality you don't find everywhere. You'll have the time of your life, be some great friends, and you'll be so proud on a day like this when you're finished. <laughs>